Also, we passed a statutory change as well. And one of the ways I got that push forward is because some of the Tea Parties and 920s who helped me orchestrate that idea. And finally, remember, one of the reasons why Obamacare is so bad is that they move $500 billion out of Medicare. Now remember, Medicare is no entitlement program. You paid for it. It is a program that you paid for. Welfare is a Medicaid-type program, but Medicare is when you pay for it every single paycheck. Think about it. There's no one here old enough to get Medicare, I can tell. But, uh, but the idea is in Medicare, you work 47 years before you get that benefit. And I think that is a sacred trust, and it's something you paid for. And when we repeal Obamacare in 2013, with your help, we'll put $500 billion back in that program, buy some more longevity there, because you paid for it. <coughs> We're in a war on terror. Who are we fighting? I think uh, there's not a specific nation, though, that many nations sponsor that effort. But I think we recognize there are people who <laughs> simply want to destroy America. And I'm obviously very pleased that uh, we were able to get Osama bin Laden. I think that has been a success. And obviously, President Bush's actions in Iraq and Afghanistan were successful in this right. I remember I was in the state capitol when 9-11 took place. I'm sure every person knows exactly where they were that day. And if you'd asked me a question, is this going to be a common occurrence in my lifetime? Sadly, I would have said yes. But President Bush did a darn good job of fighting the war on terror. And he needs to be applauded for that effort. And I'll tell you, we're going to continue that fight. But I'll tell you what I, one thing I will not support. I do not think we should be in Libya. I do not think we should be in Syria. And I think we should also start moving out of Iraq and Afghanistan. We do need health care reform. What is your plan? With health care reform, I differ from the Ryan plan. Uh, the Ryan plan is one that does not balance the budget. Let's we'll be candid about that. There are some ideas put up by, uh, let's see, Connie Mack here in Florida, who has the what's called the 1% plan and others. But my health care plan would be this. One is, I think with Medicaid or what they now call Obamacare, give the states the right which we have done. Again, the health care bill that we passed this year will give the, each state the flexibility to not only have the ability where doctors, not bureaucrats in Washington, make decisions, but more importantly, patients and their and uh, their doctors make those decisions. And with the, I would do on the on the health care plan is say this, just like the Ryan plan did with Social Security, we give the individual the choice to say in traditional Medicare or move to the new system, give them the choice, but move that age from roughly 54 down to my age. I'm 41, because someone needs to prepare. If you're telling me, in my case, I've been working for 23 years. And if every single paycheck I've ever paid, that if they're going to make a new Medicare plan, I need the time to adjust. I do not think 11 years is enough. And as I said before, moving $500 billion out of Obamacare, or should be out of Medicare into Obamacare, is a mistake. And so my health care plan would be one where they give you the choice on Medicare, and people my age would move into that new type of voucher system that Congressman Ryan talks about. We all know the Powell Ryan plan does not affect anyone 55 years and older with regards to Medicare. Do you endorse the Paul Ryan plan, and why or why not? Well, a lot of people have asked me this question. And uh, I'll tell you what, I first of all, I never make a decision until I'm ready to make a decision. I think that I should get as much input as possible. And as you know, I focus most of my attention this year on doing great policy in the state of Florida and keeping my promises to the state of Florida. We backed up every single one. As far as the Ryan plan is concerned, I believe that the age should be adjusted downward instead of 50 or just under 55. I think it should be the 40 or 41 year old time frame, at least 45, and here's why. Again, you need time to think about your future. And with Social Security and with Medicare, you paid for it. It is not a welfare program. And I think you have that flexibility to do so. The other thing that's so bad about Obamacare is it reduces the effectiveness of the Medicare Advantage program. The Medicare Advantage program, again, is patient rights. It's your choice to get into the health care plan that works for your individual needs. And you don't have to have a wife who's a doctor like my wife is to know that if you start to create a Medicare plan a lot more like this current Medicaid plan, we will lose health care as we know it. And that's why I'm so vehemently opposed to the Obamacare and why I think the Ryan plan would be better if we adjusted the age that people actually paid for it would receive the benefits they were promised. What do you think is the biggest problem with the economy, and what actions would you propose? 
I, I think the biggest problem with the economy is the uncertainty that currently exists. There's just a lot of uncertainty, whether it be gas prices or government regulations, let alone taxation. And the agenda that I talked about before that we followed in the state of Florida with Rick Scott's leadership and our own in the legislature was simple. If we offer three things to individuals, we'll grow this economy. Stability, predictability, and certainty. When there's uncertainty, people keep money on the sidelines. Again, I literally go around every single day, talk to business owners and leaders, people who invest their own money in the future of this country and their own business. And because of Obamacare, a lot of money is on the sidelines because they're not sure the cost of Obamacare. No one is, let alone the state of Florida. So what we need to do more than anything else is put a pro-growth policy in. Where I do agree with Congressman Ryan is here. By simplifying the tax code, I would support that. I like the fair tax, I would support the fair tax. I also like the idea of a flat tax. Anything to simplify the tax code. I also like the elimination of the death tax. I like the elimination of the capital gains tax. And here's why. Any money you have to invest in the stock market, you've already paid taxes on. And of course I get rid of the, the taxes on interest because the one thing we need to do more of, put more money in the piggy bank and save some money. Will you sign a pledge that you will not support any form of fixed rail public transportation? Well, here's what I will do. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the letter that I just gave to Rick Scott last week. I want to make sure whatever deal was cut on SunRail two years ago is the same deal. Because I've seen some reports uh, with some of the help from the very group here and the tea parties across the state that says that the state might be obligated should the locals fail or the feds refuse to pay. And so I've sent that letter, letter to the governor. As far as high-speed rail, as you know, when the governor came out against it, I supported him at his side. But as far as um, the overall transportation issue, I strongly believe that we need block grants. We get 90 or 95 percent should be controlled by the state of Florida, and maybe the state of Florida will send up 5 percent up to Washington, D.C. for some national-type projects. But the state of Florida, they've got some very able folks in the governor's office or the legislature, and they should make that decision. Because we all know when you send money up to Washington, D.C., there's a transactions cost. And the last thing we want to do is see money spent by bureaucrats or overhead, let alone red tape, as opposed to using those gas taxes that you and I pay to improve <coughs> Florida roads. We could have used that money they wanted to spend for high-speed rail on widening I-4 or I-75. Or Every time I come into Tampa, when I'm across I-4, is it misjunction function? What do you call this one place where I'm always getting held up? Malfunction Junction, thanks. Uh, but the idea is the state should have a block grant on transportation with a small percentage going to the feds for national projects. I think that would work much better. What are we going to do to eliminate our dependence on foreign oil? What I would like to do, first and foremost, is open up drilling in Alaska. I find it absolutely arrogant of Washington, D.C. to tell the state of Alaska that wants to drill for oil that they can't. Think about that. In addition to that, I think we should open up the Gulf that was previously opened, and I think we should look at an, what we call an all-energy solution, whether it be shale or other products. There's going to be a mixed thing, but let's let the market decide where the resources go. I think Washington, D.C., or at least the U.S. Senate, made a very good decision last week, which was simple, that they're not going to subsidize ethanol anymore. Whether the obvious being the subsidies, the second part being it takes away our food source in the middle part of the country, which causes all of our prices for food to rise. And so I believe that the all energy solution that we're talking about in Florida is a good idea. And as I've already tried to push until, the, of course, the unfortunate incident in Louisiana to actually look at drilling in Florida. Because, again, we need to become self-dependent. Since the creation of the Department of Energy, our dependence on foreign oil is increasing. So, I'm a history teacher. Stop doing that. Okay. Repeat successes, don't repeat failures. And so this is why I'd like an all-energy solution, and it would start by drilling in Alaska, and because that changes, the, of course, the supply and demand laws, and we need to be more aggressive about that effort. Should there be public unions? I think the unions have the right to uh, unionize. Uh, and, and if a person chooses to form a union, they, they can. Of course, ours is a right-to-work state here in the Florida. Let me just make really clear about this. Anybody know the score I received from the unions? <laughs> a zero. Not often I want to be called a zero, 
But uh, in that case, they literally, this, the unions across the state have given me a zero, and every single day in the last legislative session, guess who was knocking on my door, not exactly happy with this, for requiring state workers to start paying into their own pension systems. And so we need to uh, really combat this com uh, election cycle with groups like SEIU, which are growing dramatically. And that's why we basically said to state workers that your benefits package, be it health care or retirement, should never be more, uh, let's just say, more impressive or, or better than the people who actually pay the taxes. And this is what we did this year and taking on these types of programs. Tell us your philosophy on subsidies and earmarks. I would not support any earmark, um, and I've, I've signed a pledge to that regard. I would work, of course, with the administration to, to make sure that Florida got a quote its fair share. But the first thing I would do in anything else in this, I support fully a balanced budget amendment. I support, no matter Democrat or Republican president, a line item veto. And I support the new uh, idea where we will not get any kind of, uh, first of all, I do not increase support increasing the debt limit. But there, if they do cut a deal while I'm not there, they better get the balanced budget amended and required spending cuts. And again, here's the difference between myself and my opponents, especially Bill Nelson. I've done it. I balanced the budget. I put a spending cap in place. I didn't talk about it or hope for it. I worked with the House members and the Senators, and we got this on the ballot or we passed it. And at the end of the day, I hope you're looking for a United States Senator just like you look for a person you're going to hire on a job. Have you done the heavy lifting? Have you, in essence, in a smaller company, produced results, tangible results, that you would want to see on the national level? So when you talk about entitlements, when you talk about spending, when you put about, talk about curbs in spending, when you think about taking on Obamacare and getting something done, I'm your guy. Because I've done it, and I've been willing to be in the back row in order to get it done. There's a budget crunch, and you have to reduce spending. Which of these agencies' budgets would you reduce? EPA, DOE, FDA? Yes. <laughs> but in all candor, remember what I said before. I think it's very important that we block grant transportation, that we block grant education, that we block grant HHS, meaning specifically Medicaid, and not allow Obamacare to even be instilled. I mean, just think about the numbers, folks. If we increase Medicaid in this state, of almost three million Floridians to almost four and a half. What do you think that's going to do to the transportation budget that we need? What do you think it's going to do to the education budget, let alone tax cuts we'd like to provide the citizens of this state? This is why it's so important that we move towards block rents. Ronald Reagan was right. And again, it shows respect for the individual states. And if I recall, it was the states that formed the national government, not the other way around. Let's show respect for that. Let's show respect for the Tenth Amendment. And that's what I've been fighting for. Again, I had my ticket punch, folks, to Washington. And I chose not to go for my family and for the actions that I took on the Senate floor this year. It was not easy to sit in the back row and be ridiculed for years for being too conservative. I find it incredibly ironic. Some of my opponents are calling me liberal. That's, I mean, that's a unique one. But that's the kind of idea, and that's the kind of thing where we may be focused on a common agenda and look to the not just the rhetoric, but the actions that you all are looking for to lead. What is your opinion of climate change science? Not much. Um, again, if, if as many scientists you say is happening, as many says it's not happening. I still remember vividly. I was in, I think I was in seventh or eighth grade, and I remember getting a science little magazine. Uh, they handed out, and they, they said the coming ice age. Do uh, you all remember that? Right? So now it's the other way around. Okay, well, that's nice. Um, but what I'd say is this, is if we're going to have to spend and radically change our lifestyle, it better be an absolute answer. Remember, I teach what they call political science. Okay, it's very unique. Okay, uh, to call that a science. It's not mathematics. It's theory. And until that absolute theory takes place. But let's be candid. We're all environmentalists in this way. If you don't take care of your own personal property, the value goes down. Sadly, we talk about forest fires out west or you name it. When no one owns the property, the state does, you have environmental calamities like they had in the former Soviet Union. And you got forest fires out west. I believe in 
private property rights. And those of you who study the Constitution know two things. 